What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 81 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at Name Windows. First, we're going to install the Name Windows script, then after that we're going to use text commands to get them to display in-game, and then finally, we're going to tweak the script a little bit to change where the Name Windows are displayed. With all that said, let's get into it. So, the very first thing that we need to do is install the script. The link to download this will be in the description. This is an amazing script made by Mr. Jella, and what we want to do, since we're playing on version 18, is just click here for this paste bin link. I've already done that, I've already opened it up right here. And what you want to do is just do Control A, Control C, and just copy it all. Then go into your game's scripts folder, and make a new script near the bottom. Definitely above main and compiler though, I just made a little one here for bonus methods. So what I'm going to do is just insert another one here, but I'm going to call you Name Windows. And I'll just paste it all in right there. Cool. So now it's all ready, ready to be used in game. Later we're going to tweak it slightly, but uh, yeah, it'll only be a slight tweak. Anyway, the way that the name windows work as listed in the description of the resource, which will once again be linked in the description. The way that this works is you do slash XN at the start of a text command. So what I have here is a Psyduck that just says, hi, I'm Psyduck, or it just says Psy. So what we want to do is before the text is displayed, we can type slash XN and then in brackets, just say Psyduck. So the value in brackets will be the name that's displayed above the text box. So let's go and check this now in game, shall we? I'm gonna boot her up and let's talk to this awesome little Psyduck. There he is. There we go, look at that. Already we have a text box displaying above our other text box with the name of who's talking. However, you'll notice that the window skin above doesn't match the window skin below. Thankfully, this is actually very easy to fix. By default, it will use the selected choice window skin, which is this default uh, like gray and black looking window skin. That is also the one that you'll see by default when you do a map transfer. Check this out. Aha! So, let's go into our game's window skins folder and fix this. First thing that we want to do is go into our games folder and then go to graphics, window skins. And what we need to do is we f need to find the window skin that matches the one that we were using in game for our text boxes. So that one was speech HGSS one. Let's copy this. And since we're using the slash XN command, what we need to do is add a new um, window skin file here that's speech HGS one XN. What this will now do is use this window skin for the name window that's a, that appears above our Psyduck. So that's pretty cool, check this out now. Let's talk to our Psyduck. Hello Psyduck, look at that. Now the window skin matches. And once again, the reason that this works now is because we have speech HGSS1 XN. So let's take a look at another thing that we can do. There is also a dark mode a uh, name tag or name window that you can use by calling DXN. And what this will do is it will change the color of the font to be white. So that way it will look better on darker window skins. However, in our game right now, we're kind of using a bright window skin. So this doesn't look necessarily great, but let me just tweak it real quick. And then we'll see how this looks with darker window skins. All right, so what I've done is I've gone into the message config script here and I went to the text skin name by default and changed it to a darker window skin. This is sign HGSSTT, which is another window skin that's already in our window skins folder. Now, what I should do is copy and paste this window skin, and instead of making a alternate one that has XN at the end, we need to do XN dark. So that way this will appear for when we use the dark mode of the name window. So. By default, this will be our window skin. And if we use the slash DXN command, we will see this window skin for the name window. So let's uh, let's run our game once again and take a look at this. Everything's gonna look a lot darker now for our window skins, but I think it'll look, uh, it'll look cool with our name window. Now let's talk to our Psyduck. Look at that. That looks actually pretty cool. Honestly, like that looks pretty dang awesome. It doesn't look great when we're talking to Professor Oak over here with the blue and red text. 
But here, with the uh, the white text there on the darker window skin, I think that looks pretty nice. And I'm really glad now that we have a matching name tag to boot. That's pretty cool. However, there is one more thing that I would like to do for this tutorial. You notice that when I was talking to Professor Oak, he's on the right side of the screen. But whenever we were talking to Psyduck, the name tag was on the left side of the screen. Well, fortunately, it's actually extremely easy to change the position of our name windows. So if we go to the name windows script and scroll on up to near the top, you can see that there's an offset Y and an offset X. What we want to do is adjust the X value. If we adjust the Y value, you know, we'll move it up and down. But if we adjust the X value, you know, we'll move it left and right. So what we want to do is we want to add a value to push it to the right. And I found that it looks decent when you add 310. So if you set the offset name window X to 310 and then run your game, you'll notice that the name tag will be on the right side. So let's go and check this out again. Look at that, Psyduck is now on the right. Cool. Now let's get this working with our Professor Oak. When he says, hey there, I'm Oak, we can get rid of the blue text because I thought that didn't look too good actually with our darker window skin. And we can do XN Oak. And really quick, let me just go and copy that XN Oak and go and paste it at the start of this one. And it looks like I didn't paste the uh, close bracket, so I'll add that real quick. There we go. So now when we talk to Oak, let me add, make sure to add it to the end here also when he says, cool, bruh. You know, <laughs> a, a classic Oak catchphrase. It's from the anime, I swear. Now let's run the game once again. And now let's talk to Professor Oak with the name tag on the right side of the screen. Hello, Oak. There he is. Hey there, I'm Oak. The th <laughs> See, I made a little bit of an oopsie there real quick. I'm not going to edit that out, though. I'm keeping this in. I did slash XN. We need to do DXN. It's important to remember the difference. If you do XN, what you'll do is you'll get the lighter, uh, brighter color name tag. But we want to enter dark mode. It's easier on the eyes, and it looks cooler anyway. So let's do slash DXN. Now let's take a look at our name tag, or our name window here. I keep calling them name tags, but our name window with Professor Oak talking to us. There we go. That's looking pretty decent. Honestly, we could potentially even push it down a little bit. You know what? Let's do that really quick. Let's push it down like 10 pixels. Let's uh, let's do this on the fly, man. I'm down to have a good time, you know, working on a short tutorial anyway. Let's, uh, let's see how that looks now. That looks a little bit better. We could push it to the right a little bit, but hey, anyway. That is how you can set up name tags for the characters in your game who are talking. Look at that, Oak. Cool, bruh, he says. Nice. Anyway, I think that about does it for this tutorial. This is going to be a quick one. One of the reasons that I wanted to do this one now was because I feel like it pairs very well with my previous tutorial for displaying the dialogue portraits. So if you want to go up above and beyond for the dialogue in your game, you can add portraits. You can now add these name windows. And uh, yeah, you can do some cool stuff to make the events in your game look even better. So hopefully... You take these and get some cool ideas for your own personal Pokemon project. Anyway, that does it for me for this video. I want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate you. And be sure to follow on the old Twitch, which I still need to get back to. <laughs> I'm, I'm sweating nervously. <laughs> anyway, that does it for me. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And until next time, I hope that you all have a good one.